Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to week two yeah. of the, uh, the takeout. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with me, Kev the Rev and Pastor Angie. Yep, so yep. glad to have you guys back. Uh, we are rolling through the book of Matthew. That's right. If you missed last week, you gotta go back and check it out. I mm-hmm. uh, recommend it to your pay people, uh, recommend it to people around you. And a sub to the channel would yeah. be. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, so Pastor Angie, week two, what are we up to now? So we're in week two of Matthew, so exciting. So we, we finished off last week uh, at the beginning of the Beatitudes. Come on. And so we we just got in where, you know, we're like blessed are the, hey, you know, the peacemakers. peacemakers. I, I love it. So you, you like, <laughs> then he goes on after saying, you know, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Uh, Jesus goes on on the mountain because this salmon is so sweet. Everybody mm. there is feeling, I love this salmon. I know, I hey, came for this. I came for this. <laughs> Then he comes and he says, you are the salt and the light. Mm. I'm like, hey, mm. brother, who told you? <laughs> Say, can you? <laughs> You're the salt and the light. You cannot be I hidden. I on a hill. You cannot be hidden. <laughs> He says, I'm getting bigger every day. Yeah, hey, I was saying, I'm like, hey, 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 I'm sitting next to my husband saying, hey, this is a man, eh? I, know. I love this someone. Why, hey. did, why haven't you brought me to this place before? <laughs> where has he been hiding? I love it. Uh, That's where it ends. After mm, that, things get fake. Wow. The guy is like, you know what? Uh, but following me mm. is going to take some things. It's upside down. It's upside down. It's Come called on. this. We're calling this week the upside down kingdom. True. And he he says, uh, you know, Jesus comes and says, you know, following me means that you I expect you have a, a, a higher standard mm. than even the than law. Even the law. Mm. He says the law says this when it comes to divorce, but this but, is what I say. Come on. He says you cannot even divorce. You can't even look at a woman lustfully. The law said, you know, do not commit adultery. I tell you, if you look at a woman lustfully, you, you already, already committed adultery. Yeah. He says uh, the law says do not commit uh, murder. murder. But, but I tell you, if you look at a, if you hate your someone, brother, hey! you've already killed them. You're like. So you're like now last week when I hated so and so. Now what is he saying? Yeah. I mean, you just came from a fight with uh, with your spouse over something, and you're like, <laughs> no, this man is is molecaying issues. Yeah. So he he ups the standards and says, I want you. In fact, he says, I want you to be perfect. Mm. You're like perfection. This is the point in that service that I've turned and looked at my husband and said, I know. And I've also flipped. And on it's not even time it's to not give. It's not even time to give. <laughs> And I flipped on the guy and told him, let's go home, pack up your children and go home. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. I came for a wonderful Sunday. Yeah, I came not for blessed be, are you. Yeah, blessed are you. That's the that's the someone I came, I came, I didn't come to die to self. Wow. And so he ups the standards and he says, mm. this is what I expect of you. Mm. He says, I expect you to, to love, love your enemies. To love your enemies, like enemies. My friend, do you know who my enemies? In my mind, I'm already listing them. I know. Then yeah? he says, I want you to love them. I want you to be compassionate to them. Mm. He says, my disciples or the true mark of somebody who's following me or, or who's a, my son is someone who's ready at all times to reconcile. Mm. I'm like, do you know what Jeroga did to me yesterday? I know. <laughs> how he looked at me. Yeah. How he disrespected me. Did you not say I was the salt and the light? Just a few verses down. Yeah. I was running with that. And I here was running Jeroga is watering you down. Yeah, now he's watering now there's me a solution down. Because water, know. salt, soli- okay. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Who did you bring you? Who is he? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. this someone is too much. Wow. So I I feel um I I I listen to this and I'm like, God is asking me to die to self. Mm. Um just at a standard that makes me so conscious of my weakness. True. And how I am unable to live up to this standard. Wow. But but it doesn't leave you there because mm. he goes ahead and gives you, he gives you um where to draw that power mm-hmm. teaches them how to pray. Yeah. Yeah. He I, teaches you how to pray. Fasting exactly. talks about fasting. Uh, talks about perspective exactly. when he said, lay up your treasures mm. in heaven. Mm. Because you know, Pastor Angie, there's some things you can only go through in light of eternity. Mm. There's some things you can only go through. Like if, if someone steals your car, if, you know, this Jorah steals your car, and then you're like, I need it back because of now. Mm. But in light of eternity, you're like, you know what? You're going to be flying in exactly. heaven. You're going to be in light of eternity. That's why he's saying, 
you're going to store up your treasure somewhere else. You're going to have a perspective right. that is bigger than now. That's right. I know many times we say, you know, you're too heavenly minded for any earthly good. Mm. But I actually believe you cannot be of any earthly good until you're heavenly, heavenly minded. minded. That's yeah. right. You got to be a citizen of a different place. That's why Jesus says, uh, think of things above. Wow. Treasure these things. Wow. Uh, whatever things are holy, That's whatever right. things are you know uh, set your mind set your heart on things above but it's not just that it's to be able to say this is where we are going but what does it do we do now exactly because it's this same jesus who said occupy until i come exactly you know uh, uh do business until i come uh uh yes yeah, so we are laying out our, our treasures there because you're a people of a different place but then we live here we get to activate the kingdom for here and exactly and now and i think that that's what i love about it because jesus doesn't just uh, doesn't uh, just um talk about it he exemplifies come it. on come he, on and then even now in in reading the word like we are doing we mm. are actually setting our mind mm. on heavenly things True. it's like we're decoding or what am i saying yeah decoding when you're removing wrong code yes, yes. you're removing the wrong code from your mind mm. and making the word of god the new code yes and so what does it look like for you to your instinct to first be love instead yes. of hate it yes. means some decoding has to take place yes in your head and then it becomes it it moves into your behavior yes and so what i feel what i love about this section even if my my heart every time i read it i have some resistance i mean not like some yeah. emotional battle yeah. but i i read it and i see there there has to be some transaction that mm. takes place in my heart and my soul Come on. invisible Come in, on. to to human eye mm. and it's only by reading the word of god that that transaction takes place mm. that 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 recalibration almost takes wow. place so you tell god my instinct is to last oh. What the world has taught me is mm. last is normal. Mm. What the world has taught me is when I when I hit someone, I abandon you. Yes, yes. Good vibes. In fact, only. it's at the beginning of the year where we say everyone who left yeah. me, everyone now I'm I'm <laughs> letting you go. Me, I'm yeah. starting with new starting bodies. Starting with new bodies, <laughs> only positive vibes only. But, yeah. but the word of the Lord says, actually, I want you to push through mm. and love your enemy. Yeah. And so you come and you say, Father, I submit to this word. I don't know how it's going to be lived up but I submit to it so that it may be made manifest in my life. Wow. And that's why by the end of I like what you're saying that it changes your thought process mm. but then it needs to permeate into your behavior. behavior. Yeah. That's why by the end of chapter 7 we are reading about the the house built on a rock. Mm. Well, that story always baffles me because it's given this contracts between these two houses mm. and it says those who hear the word and not do it are like you know those who build on yeah. sand and then yeah. those who hear the word and do it are like those who build on a mm. rock now the problem is this the moment you start hearing god's word you've already started building mm. whether you like it or not uh-huh. when you start reading god's word you've already started building i love it the foundation is put when you start acting on the word okay And that's why it's important for you to act on the word and the bible it's not me the bible says when you don't do it you're like a foolish yeah. Hey, brother, what are you telling me now? <laughs> Because it's not just we we are a culture that has got into knowledge. Mm. We need to know and there is nothing wrong with knowledge. In fact, people it's perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. But I think the perish is not just lack of knowledge, it's lack of applied knowledge. Exactly. Where you're not applying. It's not mm. permitting into a behavior. Uh love your enemy, but you're like my enemy is different. Like yeah. this guy is Yeah, they no, get it. It's that person that God is saying love them. Your 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 belief system is proved mm. in your action. That's right. If you have not acted in it, you truly don't believe you it. You don't believe it. Come If on. you're not acting it, then you don't believe it. True. And I love that Jesus then from that moment mm. begins to uh, exemplify it. Show He them begins how. to show them how. Mm. So the first miracle we see because now he starts bringing the kingdom of God. Mm. He's, he's he cleanses the leper. Oh. It even say the title in my uh, Bible is he cleanses the mm. leper because it says um the leper came up to him and says if you are willing I mm. love it and Jesus is like I'm always willing. Yeah. He says if you're willing and then it says that Jesus stretched out his hand touched him mm, first mm. and then healed him wow. he restored him back into community Come on. our god is so compassionate mm. his standards may be high but his goal is to bring complete healing and transformation physically yeah. in the spaces that he's in yeah. and so he restored this man's soul and said when he touched him he says I've, i've brought you back and then he literally did it and ah! i like it because <laughs> i like it because You're saying that God rest, Jesus restores him back to community. Mm. 
as a leper, this person has not experienced community for as long as he was yeah. a leper. Yeah. Because as a leper, you are first of all ostracized. Yeah. You are, you are walking alone. You live alone. People give you food with a stick. Imagine. So this is the first time he's feeling a touch. Oh, come on, somebody. Mm. This is the first time he's feeling someone touch him. And so I like that. I like that. And leprosy in scripture is a type of sin. Mm. Leprosy begins in the, under the surface. Mm. Yeah. Begins under the surface. Just like sin. It's under the surface. I can hold, I can I can be able to control this thing. And then it comes out as a sore. And then before you know it, it starts spreading. Just like sin, sin spread. Mm. You, you are doing it alone, came out, starts spreading. And then sin alienates and breaks. Oh, wow. You, start, you get broken away from community. Oh, you start wow. break, being broken away from your family. You start being broken. You, you end up being alone. Mm. You know, sin takes you farther than you're willing Father to go. Keeps you there longer than you're willing to stay. Uh, cost you more than you're willing to pay. Mm. And the first act that Jesus is doing is restoring a leper uh, back to community. He's dealing with the sin in that sense. Exactly. Bringing the person back. Faith of a centurion. Heals a centurion. He heals a yeah. centurion just by the, the word. Because the guy underst- understands the authority of God. Come on. Or what God is able to do, and mm. he says, "Just, just say the word, and my servant is healed." Mm. And God heals him based on that. And I, and I love that because it brings: is Are you willing? Mm. Do you have faith? Yes. Uh, it says, "I'm willing to do it." In fact, I'm able. Just my word can bring healing. Yeah. He heals many along the way. He heals Peter's um, the the mother-in-law. Yeah. Um, he heals the he heals the paralytic later the on demoniacs. the demoniacs he heals uh, the woman who had been possessed who was uh, not possessed the woman who was sick for 12 years mm. there was a child the woman was sick for 12 years bleeding and there was a child who was 12 year old mm. he heals them at yeah. the same moment and restores them back into community <sighs> Come on. this is what god desires to do mm. but he says there's a cost to it mm. my power can do it but there's a cost to following me yeah. and you have to be willing to pay that price yes you have to be willing to to pursue mm. with everything that is within me to live up to the standard of christ mm. um and i don't know if we we had we desire like it's like it's like we think you you want it with your head <laughs> and mm. not to explain but then to 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 live it out there's like a battle that's taking place yeah. and and you need to recognize that even as you go into this week and say father i submit myself i mm. submit my will mm. and my desire what i love with about jesus is he, he's his posturing is almost as if like just desire to walk this path come on come on just desire it mm. uh, even if your mind doesn't just desire this upside down kingdom you will see it come, come to on. pass yeah and someone who counted the cost as you're saying are we willing to count the cost is matthew mm. Ma- uh, in we are now ch- in chapter 9 Verse 9, Jesus mm. is now calling Matthew. That's right. I like how Matthew frames it. Because this is Matthew writing the story. Mm. Uh, and I think the call of Matthew is narrated both by Matthew and by Luke. That's right. So this is Matthew telling his own story mm. of how Jesus called him. This is what Matthew says. It says, as Jesus passed from there, he saw a man mm. called Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth. He said, follow me. And he rose and followed him. I like that he says, Matthew is saying, you know, if it was me, I would have seen a tax collector sitting in a tax collector's <laughs> booth. booth. Yeah. But Jesus says he saw a man mm. with a name mm. sitting in the wrong place. Oh, come on, hey, somebody. Preach, preach I up. want you to know that Jesus <laughs> does not see a gossiper. Mm. Jesus sees a woman or a man <laughs> with a gift of evangelism, mm. but sharing the wrong stories. Oh, oh come on, come somebody. On now. Come on Jesus now. does not necessarily see a thief. Mm. He sees a person mm. with an attachment to people's things. <laughs> <laughs> and so he says, if you only desire to mm. save their souls the mm. way you want to save their property. All right now. <laughs> so he sees someone who he sees an apostle uh-huh. who can go to new territory Imagine and bring you know, out hey, treasure. I see it. <laughs> Jesus, it's so interesting. Jesus doesn't see an addict, you know, uh, someone who's addicted. Yeah. He sees a man yeah. who can be committed hey. to the to he's something. To something. So he's committed to a bottle. But if that person <laughs> gets committed to the kingdom you know one will be able to get him off nothing can stop him <laughs> and so he sees a man oh, with wow. a name i love it i want you to know that jesus sees you yeah. he sees your name exactly. he knows your name exactly you could be in the wrong booth yeah you could be in the wrong place oh wow but he sees you I love and what it. he's saying to you today is follow me the question is are you willing to count the cost because matthew I, here's another distinction between what luke says that Matthew left everything, everything and, and followed. followed him. But Matthew says this. This is what Matthew says. He says, he arose and followed him. Mm. 
for him in Matthew's mind everything does not exist even mm. like it he's counted the cost of all the money he had collected that day he arose. all the money he just arose and left mm. it's Luke who actually gives us perspective of what that he left, he left everything. everything and followed wow. the problem is that many people are still considering the everything oh, wow. ah, will I live will I not live? Mm. be like Matthew just it doesn't count anymore it's like Paul who says I counted this dung mm. and just go I pursue the Lord and you see because it also begins with this thing of be anxious about nothing come on you see oh, it's yeah. the same thing yes. and so Jesus keeps going back and forth and then he shows a living example or someone who was anxious about mm. nothing and said I'm willing to follow I'm so willing good. to follow so and good. so read this whole week with that perspective seeing how how Jesus declares it and then he shows a, a person living doing the same thing wow. and i'm like and i pray for you this week that you will walk into this week seeing mm. and hearing what god desires for you to do and seeing the vision that you will become just like christ come on you will be able to to experience his power because he has given you power and authority to ma- make manifest his power in your day to day in your workplace in your family restoration healing mm. reconciliation of people will happen when we 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 believe this word and live it out we eat it until it becomes it becomes the behavior it's in our mind but it comes lived becomes lived out mm. in our day to day wow. and so it's so sweet wow taste and see that the taste lord is good taste and see that the lord it's is good so yummy. the upside downness the upside of our down kingdom, kingdom. The, it's that it's the one who thirsts and hungers that gets filled exactly you know yeah. it's the one who counts it as nothing mm. that gets it all mm. it's the one who counts his life if the one who doesn't save his life eh. that ends up finding that's it that's right oh, wow. It's wow. a sweet thing. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And so now we come uh, towards the the end this um because we end at um chapter 11. Chapter 11. Mm. So Jesus continues to talk about how um you know you're giving up um what is it called? The, this this he keeps going back and forth because how about how this kingdom there's a struggle to it mm. and there's a cost that you will pay but at the end he also gives us hope mm. and he shows us the living examples of that but at the end of chapter 11 he 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 gives us comfort about this journey and i Come wanted on. you to read it yeah chapter 11 ends with such a sweet story because all of a sudden you're listening to jesus and you're like this is heavy lord this is how do i do it how do i go through it but i want to read, read two versions uh, Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 this is toward the very end it says Uh, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Yeah, so immediately it hits you that these things that looks heavy to mm. do, what Jesus is telling you looks heavy, mm. but it's lightness. Mm. You know, Pastor Angie, the king, the, 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 the armor of God to the onlooker is designed to look heavy. That's right. But it's lightness to the person who's hey, wearing it. Oh, hey, come, on. come on now. When the Bible tells you the helmet of salvation, mm. the breastplate mm. of the righteousness, the belt of truth, the, the sword of the mm. word, the, the, the shield of faith, the boots with the readiness of the gospel, it looks heavy. heavy. It is. But to the person who's wearing it, it's it is the light. lightness of God. Amen. It's walking around knowing, man, you kill me or mm. I live, I'm going mm. to heaven because I'm, I'm born again. Yeah. It's walking around knowing that there's Hey. That you know, Pastor Angie, we forget how hard life was before we before started walking we in righteousness. That's right. People think that you're free mm. when you go to the club and drink. But I'm like, bruh, you wake up and you bump yeah. every morning yeah. in that toilet yeah. bowl. <laughs> Yeah. With no water and you live in Rosambi. I'm like, <laughs> it's heavy. It's heavy. It's the person who says, I will not drink. Mm. That's the person who's actually living Later. in lightness. Yeah. It's a person who's uh, who's walking in truth, who doesn't need to remember how to tie the different lies. Mm. The person who has the belt of truth. That's a person who's living in lightness right. because they don't rem- need to remember what lie did they tell yesterday yeah, exactly. and how is it consistent with yeah. today. That's a person who's light. Yeah. And so when the Bible says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and, and I'll, I'll give, give you rest. rest. It's the upside downness of the kingdom. Mm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Beautiful. Let me read the message version. It says this. Are you tired? Mm. Worn out? Pastor can you read it? I like I like how your voice brings some mothering nature to <laughs> oh. it. Can you just, like for real, by oh, the way? Okay, so let me read it. Let me read it. It says, are yeah. you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Mm. Come to me. 
get away with me and you'll recover your life. Mm. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Come on. Mm. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep uh, company with me and you learn to live freely and lightly. Come on. And and what the Bible here is saying is be yoked with Jesus. Now, Pastor I grew up in a farming community. Mm. Uh, contrary to popular belief, even <laughs> though Kitui, there is no rain and water, we still farm. All right. I don't know why we do it. <laughs> but you still farm. <laughs> but we still farm. And when, you, when you're training an, a younger ox how to farm mm. you yoke it up with an with mm. an older bull that mm. is used to farming mm. and you put it on the inner or you put the older bull on the inner side mm. you know what happens the older bull knows how to follow the line yeah? oh, wow, okay. the younger bull is still excited still mm. energy but doesn't have can't wear, bear the weight but it's with the older bull so the older bull is able to keep it in line mm. the older bull is able to follow the track the older bull knows the rhythms. Mm. They know, gonna go for, you know, two hours and then mm. gonna take a break. Mm. You know, the older bull. And Jesus is saying, be yoked up with me. Mm. I know the lines. Mm. I know the rhythms. I know the seasons. Oh, come on. All right. I know the pattern. Mm. I know the heart of the mm. father. You be yoked up with me. You be with me. You're gonna find rest for your souls. Because exactly. all of a sudden, it's not about you trying to find out the rhythms mm. and the seasons. It's you following my rhythms and seasons and I lead you into it. I love it because what you're saying is it's it's not about you being trying to be perfect because we get this picture that he's saying of perfection and you want to leave the service. You mm. want to stop reading the scripture. Yeah. But what God is saying is if you yoke yourself up to me, you learn it. My rhythms will teach Come you. On. You you and, and so it becomes lighter. Mm. I love what you're saying prophetically because it just says it will become later. Mm. You won't find it a struggle anymore to love your enemy. You won't find it a struggle anymore to have a certain perspective when you look at people. Mm. You won't struggle with this burden of alcoholism or this pain that you're holding and God will release it as you yoke yourself to him. And how we do that is reading the word being in community uh, you know uh, coming to church on Sunday these are the rhythms mm. that you're setting in place where you end up finding the burden and the rhythm easier love it's it beautiful come on come it's on, beautiful Pastor I love it and so you guys as you go into your week we I pray that this week God will give you different perspective I pray that your eyes will be open I know it will be an uncomfortable week uh, but I pray that as you yoke yourself to the word the burden will get lighter come on can't wait for next week so sweet see you next week take out